Alright guys, so now that you have a pretty good overview of Redux, let's go ahead and start writing some code. Now, if you just want to kind of follow along with these tutorials and just watch them before kind of, you know, writing any code, then go ahead and skip to the next video. But for those of you who want to follow along, then stick with this video and I'll show you how to set up a basic project, how to download all the sample code, um, so on and so forth. So as always, what I did is I already took all the code from these tutorials and I uploaded them to my GitHub account. So if you go to this URL, github.com, Bucky Roberts, React Redux Boilerplate, and I'll post it in the comment section below. And if I forget, which I also usually do, then someone else just post the link to it. But anyways, log into your GitHub and just clone it. Or if you don't have a GitHub account, then you can just right click this button and hit download zip. And that's gonna download all of the project files. So not only did I upload the project files, to here but I also included a bunch of diagrams of how Redux works with React, um, a lot of instructions on how to set up the project and I also included a bunch of different readme's and guides and I comment the code and it makes it really easy to learn and understand the basic Redux application. But anyways once you have this downloaded um, go ahead and extract it because it's a zip file and once you do you're going to have this directory. So of course, what you need to do from here is just from a command line, go ahead and run npm install. And that's gonna install all of the dependencies or files that you need in order to kind of start things up. Now, if you go in package.json, this is actually a list of all the dependencies that you need. So again, this is kind of normal for a React or Redux application. And if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about or what dependencies are, dependencies are just files that your program needs in order to run. Your program depends on those in order to work. So this is actually set up to use Webpack. And I know I'm kind of going to skip over this, but Webpack is kind of like Gulp or Grunt in that it's a build tool. So it really deserves its own separate tutorial series. So instead of just trying to cover everything in this series, I'm gonna make a whole nother tutorial series for it. So just a real quick overview, what it does is essentially sets up a development server so we can change our code and it refreshes live, which is really cool. And it converts all of your um, JSX in React to pure JavaScript so it can run in a browser. And I also set it up where you can type SCSS or SAS and it converts it to normal CSS so it can, of course, be displayed in the browser. So that's all it does. It allows us to write code and display it properly in a browser. And it converts all of it for it behind the scenes. So before, what we did is in our React tutorials, we pretty much had one HTML file and we included everything in that file just as JavaScript includes. And then we ran it in a browser and everything was good to go. Now, of course, you would never want to do this in an actual application because what if you had <laughs> all of the code <laughs> for your entire application in one HTML file? That probably isn't the best structure to set things up. So what I did in this project is I kind of already gave you guys a starting kit. Basically, what you want to do is you want to break up everything in your development code. So this is your development code and you're pretty much only going to be writing code in this file your JavaScript and your SCSS for styling. And then after it gets built, and again, this all happens behind the scenes automatically, then it pumps it out to this file right here, bundle.min.js. So never touch anything in here. This is just your target. This root right here is where your app is gonna be displayed. And this bundle.min.js is the file that gets automatically generated from your build tool. So again, all of the code that we write is just gonna be right in here. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up and start running it. So after you run npm install, what you can do first is you can actually just run a webpack. Now, after you run this, what this does it is it pretty much initially builds your project. So it takes all of the React code in here and it converts it to JavaScript and now your project is built. Now. Of course, whenever you run a website, it needs to run on a server. So what you can do is you can buy some server online and kind of use that for development. Or 
what you can do is you can actually just set up a lightweight development server and it's kind of a pain in the butt luckily I already did that for you too so if you hit npm run actually let me clear the screen so it's a little bit easier to see npm run start then what this is going to do is it's going to start your development server so let me go ahead and organize this and show you guys what's going on now the home page for your website is localhost colon 3000 so localhost means it's your own computer instead of like some ip address of a server in texas or whatever and 3000 is just the port and if you guys don't know what that is, then check out my networking tutorials. But basically, this is the starter application, and this is what we're going to be building. Pretty awesome, eh? Now, another thing is, whenever we write our code, the changes are going to be reflected immediately. We don't have to save any files. We don't have to refresh our browser. We write code, and we're going to see the changes live in real time. All taken care of for you by me. You are welcome. All right, so you guys are probably noticing that for our starting point, we have a whole lot of code. So what I would recommend doing is if you just want to poke around for a little bit and see all the different pieces, then feel free. But since I need to teach you guys React and Redux from the ground up, then what I'm going to do is this. Go ahead and in your JavaScript directory, dev.js, delete all of these folders right here. Those are all your React Redux folders, but we are going to be learning those from scratch. So from here, let's just go ahead and delete everything except these top three lines of code. We can get rid of this too. And actually, let's restructure this like this. Instead of a provider, I'll just write h1 and I'll write k hey now. So check this out. All right. So now we are to a point where you should be familiar with. Um, before, what we did is we just had one main file in my old React tutorials, and we just imported everything right here. And now, instead of importing React and React DOM as JavaScript files explicitly, we are just importing them from our node modules. And this was just a package that we downloaded whenever we ran npm install. So that's what we're doing right here. And of course, you already know what this line of code does. It pretty much takes a component and it renders it or displays it in a target. And this target is just this little div right there. So there you go. Awesome starting point. Now, the one other line of code that I probably should mention is this import Babel polyfill. Um, I don't think we use this in our React tutorials. Anytime you see polyfill, all this means is take code and make it backwards compatible. In other words, we're going to be writing new kind of flavors of JavaScript like JSX and ES6, and it's not going to be compatible for older browsers. So that's what polyfill is. It's the special tool that gets ran in the background that makes it compatible with older browsers. That's all. So now that we got to a nice starting point and our project is set up, we are now ready to start writing some React with Redux.